Need more help with Lucas? Check out my Patreon for $1 a month. You can get more tips and tricks videos for Lucas. This will be very helpful for when I start journalizing my content on my channel. So I'm slightly changing up the formula for this video. I'm going to talk about the general game plan that you can do with every single character. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about what Lucas mains should do based on my opinion. Now, basically, we're going on to the next row of characters and we're going to start with Ike. Ike's recovery options are easy to predict because he either goes straight up horizontal, straight up up, or he uses air dodge. And it's easy to predict which one he's going to do because if he's using side B, you can know that he's charging up side B to get to the ledge from all the way across the, the corner of the blast zone. So you'll know that he's using that and you just predict that. Either that or he's going very low to use up B or if he's kind of close to the stage, he could do up B, side B or just air dodge the stage. You have to know which recovery option he's going to do. So with Ike, once you know which recovery option he's going to use, you have to swap him that type of way. So if he uses a side B, you have to jump over there knowing that he's going to a horizontal angle and then hit him away. Now if he's using up B, you know that he's invincible at the beginning of the move or well, I'm, at least I'm telling you right now, he's invincible at the beginning of the move. So if he gets at his top of his height, that's when you want to hit him. And when he's air dodging, you have to kind of predict that he's going to air dodge because once he's close to the stage, he can either use side B, up B, or air dodge, which is going to be kind of annoying, but you have to really predict what he's going to do and what he has been doing in the past of, of your matches. Now with Lucas, I use PK Freeze and PK Thunder because PK Freeze can catch him when he's coming up with his up B and PK Thunder catches him when he's using side B. So those are the two moves I use with Lucas. Now we're going to go into Pokemon Trainer. Now look, I really hate edgeguarding this character because I am an edgeguarding enthusiast. I like going off stage, I like edgeguarding characters, but edgeguarding this character is a freaking nightmare. Now getting Squirtle off stage for me personally is a common occurrence, but gimping this character character is an uncommon occurrence because he could just switch out to Ivysaur. So basically when they're at Squirtle they can switch out to Ivysaur and when they're at Ivysaur they can switch out to Charizard. So kind of like hitting this character on stage is a kind of a huge gamble because they could just switch out and hit you or switch out and just still recover. And the thing about Squirtle is that he can switch up his direction of his up B. He can just go straight up or just in a diagonal angle and it's hard to predict which one he's going to do because if he sees that you're going to straight up and down air him from the top, he's going to switch up that up B to make it go straight up and it's hard to hit him when he's going straight up. Now Ivysaur is another beast because his recovery is so long. He could straight up just up B from the bottom of the stage and still make it back and I just don't get why this move is so long. But at the same time, it's still a tether recovery, so you do all the things that you would normally do against a tether recovery. Then when you do hit Ivysaur, you have Charizard, which will most likely use his up B after getting hit from Ivysaur. But if he's far away from the stage, he has a lot of mix-ups that he can do. He can do side B, he can just, you know, use his multiple jumps to get back to the stage and air dodge. He can also just go down below and then use his up B, and his up B is invincible. like. It has at least 11 frames of invincibility on like frame 4, so this move is hard to hit definitely in the beginning. You don't want to be trying to hit this move in the beginning, but at the end of the move is where you want to hit him. And when you use side B, either you have a strong enough move to interact with side B, or you wait till he hit the stage so you can punish him afterwards. So with Lucas specifically, you want to hit Squirtle normally, maybe with a back air or a down air. Once he switches out the Ivysaur, you could jump back on the stage and use the PK Thunder, or just go down there and hit him. And then once he switches off the Charizard, you want to like hit his up B at the top. Now when you're playing against Diddy Kong, his side B is where most of his mix ups will come from because he can just act out of his side B. He can side B then jump, side B then air dodge, side B then use up B. And that right there can become very troublesome but you have to know that his side B goes in that same angle all the time so maybe you could hit him before his hitbox come out or he grabs you. Once you hit him or he's in a scenario where he has to use his up B, you want to just throw out any hitbox to hit the up B so that way he'll just fall straight to his death. And with Lucas I'd say just use PK Thunder because you can just
just hit him when he's using side B and you could also react to the up B with PK Thunder. So while I was preparing for this video, I was about to just skip over Lucas and go into the next character, but I'm like, oh snap, I gotta actually do this character too. But y'all don't need this knowledge. Y'all don't deserve this. Y'all gonna figure out how to beat me? No. Anyway, now Lucas recovery options are quite crazy. He has a lot of options. Up B, his air dodge, and even his tether. Like, it's so many options that you can do. You can mix up with Magnet and all this crazy stuff. So it's really hard to gimp him, but if he's at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you know he's going to use PK Thunder, and that move doesn't have a hitbox all the way throughout the move. So most likely, he's going to tether, which you can hit him out of the tether, and then he's going to up B, which you wait for the hitbox to be gone from his upbeat or you have a disjoint and most likely you could pretty much tell when he's about to air dodge because he'll be close to the ledge and usually lucas is used tether a little bit further away from the ledge but if they're close maybe they're going to air dodge and if they're under the stage they definitely air dodging and basically if you're having a lucas ditto you just want to either hit his tether recovery with pk thunder or something like that and then once he's using his up b you should be going down there using side magnet don't be scared about how far down they are because you can make it back regardless you saved your double jump so go down here take his pk thunder and then come back to the stage before i get into the science section first like the video because if you're still here then you need to like it but at the same time i really want you guys to be getting help from this video so if you feel as though i have missed something from a certain character please write in the comment section so people can know this and they will be able to get help from that certain character. So Sonic, he's just kind of like Mega Man with his up B, but uh, his up B, he can act out of his up B. So he's one of those recoveries that's like, he has so many mix-ups that it's just like, yo, what the freak, man? And not only that, he's invulnerable on frames five to seven. So if I do it in game, it will be like one, two, three, four, and then he'll use his up B and then he'll have five, six, seven to be invulnerable so you can't hit him while he's rising up from the beginning of the move and then even after this if you hit him at, after this invulnerability he will still be able to get his up b back and that up b has a lot of distance that it can travel so it's like even if you hit his up b he will still be able to air dodge and do all sorts of things just like come back to the stage everything so you have to be very specific with your approach to his recovery if you're using lucas and you use pk thunder he can just mix you up so much and not only that you'll still be in lag of pk thunder so he'll come back on the stage and hit you just for using pk thunder so most likely it's not a good idea so what you want to do is probably go out there and hit him or that thing that I've been talking about, which is just go off stage, use PK freeze in the distance of his upbeat and try to freeze him that way since the hitbox is big. Now King DDD's recovery is one of the ones that I don't get as much. So I'm gonna read this frame data uh, notes for y'all. It says, invulnerable on frame 18 to 21, super armor, infinity percent on frames 22 to 34, and on 69 through 76, leg and tangibility frame 69 landing. So this hitbox is like, I, I don't understand. No wonder why I feel like I can't hit him when he's using his up B. So usually what I would do is just while he's all the way at the corner of the screen, you want to just kind of go out there and try to mess with him out there. And you want to kind of get him to a point where he can't use his up B and get back to the stage. So you want to keep on trying to hit him while he's out there and try to waste all his jumps. Other than that, you're going to have to deal with up B when he gets back on the stage and try to hit him after he lands. And with Lucas, I would still do the same thing. I would just go out there and hit him all the way at the corner of the screen. Try to use PK Fire to hit him because he's also, almost most of the time, always going to go in a horizontal angle towards the stage. Sometimes he might go low, which is kind of annoying, but you have to go down there with him and hit them that way but sometimes they like to throw out attacks while they're trying to come back to the stage too so that's also something you have to worry about now olimar i think olimar will be very troublesome if i had to play against the buzz but usually when i'm just playing online i'll just hit him while he's off stage because he has no hitbox on his up b 
With a real Olimar, it's probably a lot more variables because while they're using their up B, they can like air dodge out their up B, attack out their up B, and also just mix up their timings of coming back to the ledge, throwing away their Pikmin so they can have more like distance to cover with their up B. So it's a lot of things that you have to worry about if you're fighting a real Olimar. But again, they have no hitbox on their up B, so you have to get them as soon as possible. And with Lucas, for the most part, you just go out there and hit him because Lucas can come back from any angle. So just go out there wherever he is and hit him. Lucario can switch up his recovery like crazy because he has all these different curves he can do with his recovery. And not only that, he can just also just land on stage with his recovery. So what you have to do as a player is predict which curve he's going to do and try to hit him at any point during the curve. Now with Lucas, I would say don't use your up special because his up special is too fast to actually react with PK Thunder. PK Thunder is too slow to catch him in his, re his recovery. So what you want to do is kind of just go out there and hit him like you're just any old regular character. Now Rob, he's the stalling king. He can use his up B, use an action, and then still use his up B afterwards. So even if you're trying to gimp him, he's going to keep on throwing out hitboxes to hit you. The most common scenario with Robs is that they'll hug the stage, keep on using their up B, and then keep on using their up air to like trick you into like wanting to hit them. So what you kind of got to do is predict when they're trying to do that, and then after they use their up air, you can try to down air them. At one point when I was playing before, I remember that I didn't think that the Rob would actually hit me all the way at the bottom of the screen when he was using his up air. So he used his up air and then I hurry up and down air him when he was at the bottom of the screen. But at the same time, these Robs will mix you up. So with Lucas, I have some theories that would possibly work more than just down air him when he's at the bottom of the screen. I'm thinking the same thing about that PK freeze thing that I've been doing lately is just try to PK freeze him when he's at his lowest point. He's going to have to rise up at one point and the PK freeze is slowly moving downwards too. But they also can hit you at the same time if it's taking too long for the PK freeze to detonate on them. Now with Toon Link, I play this character so I know I use tether a lot. So what you want to do is kind of hit him out of tether first because when they up B, that's very exploitable and you know that you can hit him out of his up B regardless. And with Lucas, I usually just either hit him out of his tether, up B, or just down air him when he's using his up B. Now, when the game first came out with Wolf, I thought this character was very easy to edge guard, but he's not because he can mix you up with side B. So initially, I thought side B or up B had some invulnerability frames, but looking at this frame data, it seems like he doesn't have anything. Only thing I figured out is that side B can be angled slightly up or slightly down, which I did not know that. So overall, you have to predict which move they're going to use. Either they're going to use side B or up B, which most likely they will use side B because it's more safe. Now with Vilja, you already know he's going to be using his up special because that's what they do for the most part. They don't really air dodge to the stage as much because it's... His air mobility is not that great of getting back to the stage, so they're going to be using their up special. And the thing that you have to realize and know is that they would mix up how they recover back to the stage with their up special. It's kind of like Olimar's, but they can't act out of their up special. So you just basically just hit them while they're in their up special and keep on hitting them. So there are two things to note when you're dealing with Villager. Villager likes to hug the stage. So basically you want to do a back air really close to the stage, maybe stage spike them or something like that. And the second thing to note is that do not worry about the balloons. They're not really integral to edge guarding villager now for the most part lucas should just go out there and hit him or use pk freeze or pk fire but the thing is about going off stage against villager is very volatile because if he gets back to the stage and you're still off stage and you're all the way down in the corner you use pk thunder they're going to go out there and pocket your thunder and you're going to die if this was helpful or informative, hit the bell because if you don't hit the bell, then you won't get the next video in the series. I will probably have like a playlist of the last previous episodes on the screen. So if you want to see that, just hit the button on the screen. And if you want to theory craft or talk to the community about like anything about Lucas or edge guarding and stuff like that, go to the Discord. And I guess I'll just see you guys in the next video.